What's up, Everton Nation? I'm back. Uh, let's get this season going. Tomorrow, play Tottenham. Uh, just going to get my thoughts on just the outlook for the season so far. I'm right there with pretty much everything that's been said on all the, the social media platforms, all the YouTubers and everything. Just excited about having a new look in our midfield. Uh, last season was, especially after the restart, was pretty brutal watching our midfield just get run through, run around, and just pretty much be the reason we lost a lot of matches and weren't competitive at all. And to see Everton uh, slowly but surely pull in Allen from Napoli and James Rodriguez from Real Madrid and then Decore from Watford. Uh, and then hopefully sometime in the mid to long term, we get Gabamin back. Just a lot of options in the midfield. And um, you feel like at the very least we'll be competitive. Um, I still am not sure how far up the table that puts us. You know, uh, we're the three players I just mentioned, there's probably a risk with all of them, except for maybe Decore. Uh, Allen is, uh, hasn't played in the Premier League before, and he's older, you know, 29. Uh, and Jaimez Rodriguez is injury prone, also hadn't been in the Premier League before, also older. Decore, a little bit younger, uh, was out of form last season with Watford, got relegated. Can he pick that form back up, being with what we hope is a more talent around him? So that way. Um, so um, we'll see, but at least we'll have someone whose dedicated role is to roam around and stomp out danger like Ghana Gay did. And I'm hoping that's and thinking that's going to be Allen, somebody that can run carry the ball up forward, that's Decore, and also maybe help out, snuff out some attacks and things. And then uh, we got a little bit of style, a little flair in James Rodriguez. And I mean, I, can, I ain't gonna lie, like I wasn't huge into soccer in 2014. So I really didn't know a whole lot about James Rodriguez before uh, we got Carlo uh, Ancelotti as our coach, so, or manager. And then after that, just hearing the links, but just seeing the excitement that the whole world has had and all the Everton fans all across the world have for just pulling in a signing like that has invigorated me and got me excited. Um, and of course, I've seen all the same goals that everybody else has seen and his highlight clips. And you just think, man, if he can just bring, you know, a, a quarter of that to, to our team, then we'll be good to go. I mean, uh, the pessimist in me says he's a Guilfi Sigerson 2.0, and you can kind of see how, like, he's not really quick, but, uh, you know, he's just got a, a good left foot, but he can score for every, from anywhere. He's creative. So that's the thing, is I'm hoping that, contrary to what Sigerson brought, I'm hoping that Hamas can just bring some creativity to whatever situation he's in, whether he's playing number 10, whether he's playing on the left or right or whatever that, you know, he adapts to the physicality and the speed of the Premier League, and then he just, you know, the switch flips, and then he's banging in goals, lobbing up beautiful crosses for Rashalison, DCL, Moise Keane, whoever. Um, so, yeah, just a lot to be excited about. Um, being an Evertonian, he also can, doesn't take long to you, Think back and go, oh, felt like this last season too. Felt like this the season before, <laughs> you know, right before it started. Um, you just had optimism. Actually, last season, I kind of was like, worried because uh, we brought in the player so late and we, the thing with Zuma didn't pull off and we were in a weird situation with our, our back line. But anyway, this season, it feels a little more stable just because Ancelotti is a top manager he saw what everybody else just saw. It's not like he went and, go, and goes, oh no, the problem with us is our left back or our right back. No, he saw that the middle of the pitch is where we were struggling the most and he, they dumped all their resources in there. So I'm, I'm excited. Um, now, all that said, I don't know what's gonna happen at, at Tottenham or at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, whatever it's called tomorrow, because uh, 
got uh, James Rodriguez came in relatively late. You know, he got a week, let's say, of training, and he hadn't played since February. And so I'm, I'm hoping that I wouldn't be mad if he didn't play tomorrow. I kind of see that he will probably come in as a sub because, you know, just from a marketing perspective, you got everybody in Colombia, South America, let's say, even in the parts of America or United States where there's a huge Latin population and contingency that loves football. And then they saw the same things and just other football fans in the world are all going to go, hmm, I'm curious what's going to happen with Everton and how much Rodriguez. So to have him just sit on the bench the whole game or not even be in the squad would sort of be like, oh, you know, so I kind of feel like he has to at least make an appearance at some point in the game. I don't think he'll start, though. Uh, with Allen, uh, I could see him coming in just because we simply need that. If we if we have any hopes of really winning the game or being competitive in the game, we need someone to plug that hole of, you know, destroyer or I don't box the box guy, whatever he wants to have Allen do. Decore could probably come in because he's he's been in the Premier League. I don't know how fit he is because you know was he going hard while he was waiting on the transfer from Watford I saw reports that he was sort of training on his own so that means whatever he's doing he couldn't have been you know super sharp but I don't know maybe he was maybe he takes his career seriously and was like you know I'm not gonna lose a step waiting around to get transferred but I think even if he didn't transfer at his highest uh train at the highest level let's say that he probably could get through a game, you know, at least make it 70 minutes or whatever. Uh, oh, just reminded me that if we pull one of them off, we got Tom Davies, Gomez. And Gomez may be fine, but whatever. Anyway, I can see DeCorey on. I think we need Allen on. I think we need them both on. If if we really want to be competitive in the game against Tottenham, I hope at least those two start. And everything else, I really don't care. I mean, uh, the back, I mean, it sucks that whole gate's hurt, so... We may struggle. We don't have like our speed center back out there. We got two kind of tall, lumbering kind of guys. Not that they're slow, but Michael Keane isn't the fastest or most agile person. Actually, Michael Keane's not slow. He just isn't agile. And same for Mina. You know, they just, they're long, lanky. They can't get up to, you know, zero to whatever at a split second. They just don't have that. So, you know, maybe we'll just sit back and, and bring on let the pressure bring on us or come on us and we'll just hit on the counter or something because we can't play up high. But um, I don't really care about all that. Just excited about have, being competitive. Like Carlos said, he, he made a comment in one of his pressers this week that Everton fans would be happy because they have a competitive team. And he just seems really confident that this team is not going to be like last year's team, which... That, all the pessimism aside, that is that does make your ears perk up, you know, when you hear your coach go, nah, this team is, we're straight. We're going to be all right. We're shooting for number one, you know. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Uh, it's going to take a while before we get used to this. So, I don't know. Uh, just, like I said, excited for the season. You know, I, if I had to predict, I'd say, you know, I'd say 2-1 Tottenham just because Tottenham's, Tottenham you know we haven't beat them in a while they're pretty much aren't in sort of an unsettled position they haven't brought in a lot of players you know even if we were only bring in the two I mentioned we're still a little bit unsettled because that's two important cogs of a wheel you know of an engine going in and you know first game playing together but Tottenham brought in Hoiberg and I think a right back or something from Wolves and other than that, all their big players are going to be just just as jacked up to get the season started, and they're they're probably not going to have a whole lot of trouble gelling. Plus, they had more preseason than us. We only had two preseason games, um, and their new guys got to play some of their preseason games. Our new guys did not, so it just wouldn't be surprised if we don't, you know, come out of the gates looking like we will look in the future. You know, it'd probably be some. You just got to be patient, you know, and I hope that knowing how negative our fan base can be, that we all can just sort of take a, a step back and realize what's going on and not feel like the season's over. We're going down the same tunnel as 
you know, down the same path as with Marco Silva. Oh, we couldn't beat a top six team. Oh, we bottled it again. You know, I just this is not a time for that just because after the first game of the season, things may not look perfect uh, or even look that much better. You know, it, it's possible it could look worse, again, just because the players aren't as familiar in game time situations as they could be. So all that aside, I think we're going to have a good season. Uh, I'm super pumped to watch the game tomorrow. And, you know, I really do think this could be the beginning of something different because I think we got the right person in charge. I think this summer, uh, for it's for a change, it looks like we actually have a plan and we know where we're headed. The only thing we don't know because is that the team now can is so versatile with the pieces it has. We really don't know how they're gonna play, but it's not because we don't understand where a person fits. Like we used to be, like, well, where's Sigerson? Where is this guy? We actually kind of know where these new guys fit into the whole scheme of the game, and it looks like you could drop in. You know, horses for courses. Bring one guy in for this game, one guy in for that game, and be just as effective. So, anyway, I'm, I'm rambling. I'm excited. Uh, let's see, man. Let's get it going. Up the toffees.